get online and, and take advantage of the timing on the 25th. I know, Derek, a lot of uh, time and effort and study has gone into the health and safety protocols. When fans do go to Chase Field this year, what can they expect in terms of their safety and their comfort? Oh, it's, it's going to be very safe and clean, and, and it's our goal to make sure that every fan that enters that gate feels that, that comfort and that confidence um, and, and wants to come back, and we're sure that they will. You know, there's going to be markings everywhere and, and signs everywhere telling people how to follow that protocol, and right now it is appropriate distance, but distancing. Um, it's going to be cashless and contactless and, and constant cleaning uh, throughout the concourses and in the seats and on rails and everywhere, but you know, I think even more importantly, as we, we continue to see these numbers dwindle, which is a, a certainly a good sign, especially in a market like ours that led the world, not just the nation, led the world in infection rate. And now, you know, our numbers have, have been under such control. We hope that continues and we'll start to see even more loosening of the restrictions. And as we do, we'll, uh, we'll continue to allow more fans to come in at a very, very safe, uh, you know, safe um, um pattern and, and process and it's been uh, it's been a lot of planning but as you know Bert last year if we had the opportunity we would have had fans in whether it was 25 percent 50 percent 100 percent whatever we do we're going to make sure that their safety comes first but also our players our staff uh, we're very confident with the protocol that we have laid out and it's been approved by by the state and by the county so uh, knock on wood everything goes well and if not we, we can always pivot but I think it's going to be a it's going to be a very good process very successful. Yeah, it's worked wonderfully here at Salt River Fields at Talking Stick. We had a, a COVID record 2,400 fans in today, and hopefully those numbers keep going up as uh, everybody gets vaccinated. want to thank everybody for joining us on Facebook here. This is DBAC's Madness brought to you by Chevrolet. If you have questions for Derek or Tori or Mike, uh, please just log in there, and we'll get those questions to those three gentlemen who have been nice enough to join us here for the next 30 minutes or so. Tori, let's go back to you while we have you there. What has, uh, what has surprised you, if anything, during the spring training so far? What have you seen that maybe you weren't expecting? Yeah, you know, each year I'm surprised by the readiness of our athletes. Um, you know, spring training used to, was traditionally a time when um, you know, guys would come in a little bit out of shape and, and work themselves into, into playing shape over the six-week period of time. But our athletes came in in super shape, and the, the, the bullpens, uh, the arms, the the – the, the power behind the baseball uh, guys standing in the box were, you know, it was a very, a very noticeable um, prep for them as they geared up and got ready for spring training. I'm not going to say I'm surprised by anybody's performance. Um, I, I, I always expect the, the, the best from these guys. They've been playing with a ton of energy. Uh, the one thing that I've noticed is that this group has come together. This group, you know, it's one of, it's one of my um, not demands, but one of my, my thoughts that I have each year that these guys come together in a special way and go out there and perform as a team. And this team is coming together. Am I surprised by that? No, I'm super excited about it though. Mike, what about for you? What part of spring training factors into your evaluation uh, process? How do you see what you see in spring training and know whether to believe it or not? <laughs> uh, I, we, we traditionally go into spring training, not, not believing a ton, but, you know, when you have sort of the open competition that we have, we, we have to play some stock in it. And, you know, we, we've had a good problem to sort of sort through the last few days as we've sat down and started to talk about the roster that, you know, we have a lot of guys competing, throwing, playing well, um, starting to come around offensively that, you know, we, we may have a couple injuries, as, as we already know, to start the season um, that may free up a few temporary spots for us. Um, but, you know, it, it's good to see like the guys that are coming in and, and ready to go play. I think, I think as we've kind of locked down uh, on the roster, the bullpen, the bullpen's the obvious one in, in a lot of ways is not really much to discuss. I mean, we're talking through the number of lefties that Tori would want to have, or um, you know, how much length we really need to have behind the starting pitching. So that'll dictate some of the roles and, and, and how this competition comes down um, on the position player side of things. We're, we're trying to start to, as you've seen some guys move around the field, maybe in positions that you hadn't seen before, we're starting to get final looks on, you know, where could this guy do this and could this guy do this and how would that impact our roster? And, you know, you're starting to see guys move out to the corner outfielders, obviously, depending on what Cole's situation is going to be to start the season, there could be uh, uh, a need for us to deal with that situation right away. You know, we're trying to figure out where Cabrera, who swung the bat very well in camp, and then Escobar moving around, um, who's going to back up a med, uh, Marte's played a lot more center field. We're just, we're trying to, trying to figure out where all the pieces of the roster are going to be put together from that. 
Tori, what are, what are your conversations with Mike like during this process? How often do you guys talk and what are the conversations usually like? Yeah, um, you know, we start our conversation at 630 in the morning, just about every day. Um, you know, uh, and it's normal baseball conversation about what we've seen the day before, what our expectations are uh, for the for the current day. Um, and what are, what are some of the adjustments we need to keep making moving forward? And, um, what Mike does is he gives me a, a different, a different view. He's, he's sitting at 30,000 feet and sees it a little bit differently than I do. I'm kind of in the trenches and I miss some things and then I can give him the pulse of what's going on. So conversations are fantastic and they usually trickle over into the, into some of the coaches and we're mindful of the amount of time that we spend together. So they're fast paced and, and moving through uh, a number of guys but they're the same conversations the fans are having at home. I guarantee it. When they're watching our game, we're, Mike and I are talking about the same exact things. And, you know, how can we make this team go in the right direction? How can we make this better? How can we help this player? Uh, you know, it, it's pretty interesting. You know, if you're a fly on the wall, it wouldn't surprise you. We're just like everybody else. We love to talk about our team and what's going to make it tick and move it forward each and every day. We want to thank all D-backs fans who've joined us here on Facebook for D-backs Madness, brought to you by Chevrolet. We urge you, if you have a question, we're here for you. So is Mike, so is Derek, so is Tori. So please type in your question on Facebook, and we'll pass it along to whoever you'd like to direct it to. We have one now from Rod, Derek, who has a question for you. With limited tickets, will prices increase this year? Our, our prices have not increased. That's a That's a very good question. You know, we We've received a lot of those questions during spring training because the numbers seem to have gone up, but they were the same uh, as last year. And what is happening is the secondary market has gone crazy because of the limited seats. So there are brokers out there and it's their job. You know, they're buying up tickets and they're, they're turning around and reselling them on the secondary market and the price has gone up. Um, we, we assume the same will happen for regular season as long as there is um, scarcity and as long as there is, uh, you know, a limited capacity. Um, so again, you know, the, the best way to protect yourself is to, uh, to buy them directly from the Diamondbacks where the prices have not increased. And, um, you know, hopefully the, the, the secondary market will be corrected as we expand the number of fans that will be able to come into the ballpark. But that, that answers your question long-windedly. Uh, they will not go up. That's good news for everybody. Hopefully that, that number, the number that goes up is the attendance and not the prices, certainly. But it's good to hear that yeah. the uh, ticket prices are going to remain where they are. And Berg, you know, I mean, depending on day of the week or, or competitor, or, you know, who we're playing, the opponent, um, we, we've often had prices that can go up and down that we will set, um, but, but those are the same as years past. So um, that's not going to change. And what they're used to seeing, whether they're buying them individual or uh, season ticket, season ticket prices stay the same. The individual single game uh, ticket prices will be the same uh, as they have been in the past as far as going up, depending on the day of the week or the opponent. Uh, Mike, we have a question for you from Alan Christensen, and he simply wants to know, how does Mad Bum look? Mad Bum looks, has looked pretty good this spring. You know, today was a B game. You know, it's hard to get a read from a veteran player and, and on a backfield. We don't, we don't pay too much attention. So he's healthy. He's good. You know, I think the, I think the start before against Oakland was a, was a much more – uh, it was a much better um, view and, and much more indicative of what he's going to see uh, going out into the season because, you know, we faced an, an A's lineup that had most of their right-handed regulars in there that you would see. And he threw the ball really well against them. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're very hopeful given the full spring training, um, the ramp up into the season, the off season that he's had that, you know, we're, he's going to be leading our rotation for the year. Yeah, from what we've seen, he looks terrific. He looks to be in wonderful shape and everything. He seems very content as well, Mike, with how he's doing. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 done a good job. He's, you know, I, I we used to talk about this a lot, and and I, not to mention anyone in specific name, but there was a specific situation of a guy who, you know, we 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 brought in Rick Porcello into Boston, and you know, the first year we traded for him, and it didn't, you know, it didn't go great. We extended him right away, and the next year he won the Cy Young. Like it's. I do think sometimes guys jumping into new teams, something where, you know, you've been in one place for a long time there and God throw in last year, uh, you know, that, that nobody had experienced that before. So sometimes there is that transition onto a new club, new clubhouse, new GM, new manager, all, all sorts of things that, um, you know, and, and then having the full off season that I think sometimes, you know, does these guys are creature of habit and, and the way they prepare and how they prepare. And, um, I, you know, so we all can underestimate that at some, at some points in time, but he looks good so far. 
Uh, you guys were talking about bullpen construction earlier. Uh, Tori, we have a question for you from Alan Meeks. Uh, will you want a lefty in the pen behind Alex Young or Tori, do you want to go all right-handers? You know, those are, those are discussions that are ongoing um, that, that, you know, whether it's uh, Mike and myself or the rest of the staff, we're, we're continuing to have those conversations. Um, you know, part of me thinks that it would be nice to have a second lefty, but it's not a necessity. Um, you know, I want to, I want to make sure that these guys go out there and continue to compete and show me who deserves to be on this team. Um, and moving forward, we'll start to make some of those decisions, uh, in, in the coming days, but, uh, you know, the, the matchup part of it, it it's, it, it's a little bit overrated because of the three batter minimum. You know, you might get one of those three that you used to get two of them and take the guy out. Now you're going to probably get one of the matchups that you want. So, um, it's not as important as it used to be, but it's still something that we're going to talk through and, and figure out here in the coming days. Tori, a lot of people ask me, or they say to me, I don't like the new three batter rule because it gets rid of the strategy. But I mm -hmm. always say to them, it's just different strategy. Mm -hmm. Is that the case for you? How does it change your decision making? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it uh, from an offensive standpoint, it creates a, 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 a perfect matchup more, more times than not. And you're not going to run into a situation where you're getting matched up. Uh, left on left or right on right, right? Um, that's common sense. But the three batter minimum allows you to make some changes and uh, and attack the way you want to. So uh, I love the rule. I love the new rule. Uh, I love strategy. Um, you just have to be a little bit more creative. You got to think it, think it through a little bit more clearly than you used to in the years past. Derek, we have a question for you. Chase Field and the folks there always coming up with some unbelievable food items every year. What's new on the menu this season? Well, yeah, we don't want to give too much away because this Thursday we're actually going to be doing a, a, a look at what's new at Chase. We'll actually have a whole uh, virtual and social and, and press uh, event out there. So uh, a lot exciting. However, you know, it's going to be a little different, obviously, with the pandemic. There's uh, some stands that we're used to having open that won't be open, um, not just because of size of crowd, but because our, our partners um, may have a policy right now where outside of their actual uh, brick and mortar, you know, stores, they're just not, they're not opening up. So we, we, we are facing that as a lot of teams are. Um, but as always, you know, Levy is, is on it. We're going to have some exciting news and, and we're looking forward to, to laying that out for everybody this week, Steve. All right. We'll look forward to that later this yeah. week. Sounds good. Uh, Mike, another question for you. I know we saw some of the younger uh, prospects on the B game, on the B game field earlier today when Mad Bum was working on some things. We have a question about the farm system and how things are looking for our prospects. Um, okay. Hard to say right now. We haven't seen them in a while, you know, outside of the alt site last year and, and instructional league. So we were, we were very encouraged um, overall with where things are at. We feel like we have a number of, we have a number of players that we wish we would have played a minor league season last year, because I think we miss seeing the growth and potential of some of those guys. You know, we've spent a lot of money and a lot of draft picks the last couple of drafts. Um, especially up top. And, you know, we've, we've seen one of a couple of those, a couple of those drafts we haven't even really seen play yet. Um, but you're going to see some this weekend. Well, with the weekend's over, uh, sorry, it's Groundhog Day in spring training, as you know. Um, the, with this week coming up, you're going to see some of these young kids uh, jumping in here in the back ends of these games. That'll be exciting to see. Uh, we have, um, and then the minor league season, we're very hopeful is going to take place. And, and so, you know, I, I think there's a number of guys that we're, we're excited about. We have a lot of pitching that we've taken that we're, we're looking forward to seeing go through the A, a ball, the double A level. We think we have some position players graduating off the, the minor league system this year. And then we have another wave of guys underneath that. And so, you know, look, the minor league system is there to help our major league team win games. That's the way we've always looked at it. Um, and, and, but we, we genuinely believe that there's a group of minor league players that are kind of going to come up and impact our major league team. I think more than anything else, that's the most important thing for our franchise. Yeah, the Diamondbacks and every publication out there, the farm system seems to have a higher ranking every year. And now we're, we're top five in the major leagues, which is great to see. Uh, Derek, we have a question for you. Uh, one family asked, when tickets go on sale? Yeah, so, so tickets are going on sale uh, this week. Um, for those that have registered early and for season ticket holders, there's a couple of days before the general public, but general public single game sales go, uh, or tickets go on sale on the 25th. 
So make sure you're there to get those tickets because again, you know, it, the supply is not uh, obviously as large as it usually is. And right now we're looking at about 25% capacity. So it's a little under 12,000. Um, you know, we're hoping that after say the first four weeks, six weeks, maybe into the second or third month, we're able to, to loosen those restrictions a little bit and get more fans in, but it's just nice having fans. Um, you know, you all were saying it today on the, on the broadcast as well. I know Tori feels that way and our players do, even if we're having 23, 2,400 fans, it's a lot better than what we had last year, you know, just manufactured noise, uh, piped in. You could hear every conversation in the dugouts. You could hear every call by the umpire, every foul ball that rattles off a seat. We don't have that now. It's nice. And to even have, you know, 12,000 fans is going to be unbelievable. We're all looking forward to that time where we could have 24, 30, 35, get back up near 50,000 again. And we're getting there. We're, we're definitely getting there. Derek, I think it's 9 a.m. Isn't it Thursday when they go on sale? Oh, you're asking the actual time? Yeah, 9 a.m. Yeah. I mean, people want to jump on that. That's the way to start yeah. your day Thursday, right? Just get Absolutely. On that, is, that is correct. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Derek, one more for you from our friend Andrew Armstrong. And it is, I think it's a great question. What are the plans, if you finalize them yet, to do something about the 20th anniversary of the 2001 team? Yeah, so we'll, we'll be announcing that as well. We're definitely going to celebrate it this year. It is the 20th anniversary. Um, we're, we're excited about that. We're going to have, of course, throwback uniforms for that, for that weekend. We're going to bring in uh, a bunch of our players if, if we can. If not, we'll naturally do it virtually. I mean, one thing that we learned this past season is I, I think in the past we always took the game, you know, whether it was through Fox Sports Arizona or Valley, but, but take the game to the fans, uh, radio and, and TV and through social and any other outlet. Now, you know, what we learned is we could bring the fans into the game. And so we could do the same with players. We could do it with virtual appearances. We could do it with Zoom rooms. We could do it with, you know, virtual first pitch, virtual anthem. So there's so much more that we can do now, even for that celebration of the 20th anniversary that wasn't in the plans before. So we're recreating, reinventing everything. Uh, but it, it'll be, it'll be a, a fantastic weekend with giveaways. It'll be a recognition of those players, of that outstanding World Series and, and, uh, and also the throwback uniform. So, so details to come, but we're very excited. Looking forward to it. We'll be talking about that all year. That's going to be yep. a lot of fun to look back at that with Bob Brindley on the TV side. No doubt. Uh, Mike, Mike, we have another question for you. This one from Alec Meeks. Uh, you talked earlier about the minor league system. Where do things stand now in terms of international scouting? Um, international is back up and running. Um, we, we, you know, there was a much like on the domestic side of things, there was a pause there for a while, uh, where we shut down all scouting activity, uh, from the league, but they're back up and going again. Um, you know, I, I think, I think we've seen a number of our international play. This is, this is probably the group that you've missed the most, um, because, Last year, most of the guys, we, you know, we didn't have a DSL season. And so that class of player from the year before and last year, they didn't, they didn't play at all. Um, we brought a couple of those guys up to Instruction League, but not, not a ton because we had to be careful about how much we were traveling guys internationally. And then we didn't bring any of them to the alt site. So it was, it was really, a, it's been, you know, we've, we've, it's been a, it's been a sort of um, a gap in people being able to see, follow those, that group, those two classes of international players. You're going to see that back this year. And, and, you know, we feel good about what we've done internationally. Um, that, that group was a little bit newer. Those kids are a little further away when we signed them at 16. So you're just where you're starting to see Pavin and Varsho and, um, you know, that group of guys that we drafted in 17, that class of international players, started with Christian Robinson that you're starting to see get up through the A-ball level, but even that class underneath that, um, those guys are just getting into A-ball and then slowly into the double A. And we, we missed seeing them last year in short season um, and into probably the Kane County season um, that we're going to, you're going to get to see and meet a lot of those players um, this year, really for the first time, I think. We want to thank again everybody joining us here on Facebook for D-Backs Madness, brought to you by Chevrolet. I'm Steve Berthume here with Tori Labello, Derek Hall, and Mike Hazen. If you have a question for these three gentlemen, please type it in, and we'll pass it along to them. Uh, Tori, we have one for you now from Robert, who is interested in your opinion of Cattell Marte this spring. Yeah, Cattell has been um, has been doing a fantastic job for us, and uh, you know I made the conscious decision to. You know, transition him primarily to the outfield, um, and you know we're gonna we're gonna hold off on on 
of taking a look at him at shortstop. We know he can play there. We know he can play second base, but uh, I think his primary innings are going to be <clears throat> in center field. And I'm always impressed with whatever he does. He is a freak athlete. Uh, he is someone who can make incredible adjustments and that's what he's doing right now. He's applying some new concepts, some new thoughts that uh, are going to help him be a more complete player, uh, mostly from the offensive side. And, uh, you know, we'll see where, see where that lands him. You know, he's got some special talents. He can hit a baseball in any direction out of any part, part of the ballpark. Uh, and he can do it with ease. So we know there's a great talent in there. I know it was a little bit of a down year for him last year, but we want him to learn from it and get even better this year. Tori, you have a lot of guys on this roster that give you some flexibility, guys you can put in a number of different positions. Mm. How do you map all that out over the course of the season? Because you have a lot of options in a lot of spots. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, but you know, getting to know these players and watching them right now and seeing what they look like in, in different settings and, and uh, different spots on the field is going to give me the ability to make some of those decisions. Um, I like guys to pick up the ball on defense and I know the offense is going to ebb and flow. And I just, I look for consistency there and controlling the zone, but you know, uh, it's, it can be a little bit challenging, but I know that when these guys are working through some of their things right now in spring training, it'll give them the ability to go out there and play at a very high level, no matter where I put them. So that gives me some versatility and I'm going to just, I'm going to focus on one thing. How are we going to put a lineup out there today? That's going to give us a chance to score as many runs as possible. It's about putting points on the board. Um, and if we can do that, we're going to win some ball games. Tori, we have one more for you here from another fan who wants to know about, I, I hesitate to bring up closer by committee with two guys who came here from Boston. Um, but will there be a designated closer or will that be a bit of a revolving door? Yeah, uh, you know, we're still evaluating some guys. I don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. Um, and look, th there's a new brand of baseball out there where, where your best reliever may – uh, pitch in the seventh or eighth inning against the most important part of the lineup with the most runners on base uh, to get you out of a jam. So uh, if I'm going to limit myself to, um, you know, putting a closer into that ninth inning role when the game might not be on the line, uh, I'm not sure that that I'm ready to, to make that decision right now. So um, I'm looking for somebody to emerge uh, that are good. I'm looking for guys to emerge that'll be back end guys, and then I'll break it down that way. Um, you know, the, the season's a long one. It'll play out a certain way. Uh, we may, ch I may change my mind. I don't know, but for right now, I just want to make sure that we're saving every inning and the, the save may come in the seventh. Uh, Derek, we have a question for you from Sean Spencer. And, I, and if you wouldn't mind, Mike, could you jump on after Derek? Because he's asking about players getting vaccinated before opening day. Is there any kind of a plan to get, I know everybody has to wait their turn as they should, but what about the plan to perhaps starting to get some players vaccinated? Yeah, I, I think there's some, you know, some rumors and thoughts out there that the players are going to have an opportunity once the season starts. Of course, you know, we were hoping that it could be done during spring training really for every player and every team, yet we do, we do want to make sure that they don't jump the line, and I know our players feel that way as well. Um, we've been fortunate enough with uh, a lot of our staff members to, to go out and volunteer because they need the volunteers. And if you do go out and volunteer, you actually, you know, have a have the opportunity to get your vaccination and you get scheduled a second one. So that's always an option, at least here in Arizona. It's not the same everywhere, but it is here. Um, so some of our players may indeed raise their hand and, and coaching staff members like uh, a lot of our front office staff have done. But hopefully there's going to be uh, more of a system and process for all of baseball once the teams break camp and start to go back to their, their individual markets where um, providers can come into the clubhouse when we have more access to vaccination and when it's opened up to everybody. But that's the goal. The goal is to get everyone vaccinated, uh, you know, certainly if they're willing to. And I think what we're seeing now is more and more willing to get vaccinated because it's making a difference. Yeah. Mike, do you have anything from MLB on that? Is there any sort of scuttlebutt about vaccinations? No, nothing more than Derek, what Derek said. The one piece that I would just add is, you know, here in Arizona, which is great, the opportunity to, to go out and volunteer to get the vaccine. We're, you know, our, a lot of our minor leaguers and our alt-site guys are still going to be in Arizona. Um, it, you know, it's going to be a little hard for the major league club that's traveling all the time, maybe to be able to go and volunteer. But we're trying to get our, when possible, our minor league guys, push them out to go volunteer and get their vaccine where they can, especially the guys that are going to be here for a couple of months, um, the minor league guys, especially because 
we are a little bit unique to baseball. Our alt site is also our spring training facility. And there's only a couple of us in baseball. I think it's just us and the Rays. Um, and everybody else for the most part um, is, you know, their alt site is within some distance of their major league club. And when we're running minor league camp as well, which is bring another 125 kids in to that group, we just have to be really conscientious about our timing and how, how often and how many people are in the building at one time. So the more we get vaccinated, the, be, the more protected we'll be in any scenario like that. I know the volunteer system is a great way to go. We're lucky to have that here in Arizona. My wife and I have done that. Mike, I know you worked a volunteer shift. What was your experience doing it? It was awesome. We, had, we it was a great time. I really, it, it was, you know, I, I, met, I came back and, um, you know, I, I don't know, just at that point, I think it was 75 plus where we were. And, you know, it, it, was, it was a lot of, I'm not very good with computers and, and we, it was mostly figuring out helping people that couldn't figure out the website go to make sure they navigated to get, to get their vaccine. And, you know, there was some anxiety around, am I going to be able to get the vaccine if I didn't put in, you know, my birthday the right way. And, you know, we made sure we took care of all that and got, got everybody, um, you know, uh, in a place where they needed to, to make sure they got their vaccinated. It was a great day. It was about, I don't know, eight to 10 hours. Um, you know, all the nurses and that were out there and, um, you know, it was a very rewarding experience. It was, it was, it was fun. It was great to get the vaccine at the end of the day after, after doing that. All right. We have a couple uh, more baseball questions and then we'll wrap it up guys. Tori, this one is for you. Uh, one fan is saying, and he's correct that a lot of the uh, baseball websites are listing Josh Rojas as one of the breakout candidates for 2021. What do you think about that? I, I would align with them and say that uh, he's ready to do something special this year. Um, you know, last year was a very trying year for, for a lot of players. Um, and Josh never really got off to a good start. And uh, because of the shortened season, never had a chance to catch up. I think the most impressive thing about him uh, this off season was that he made some mechanical adjustments. He trusted some, some coaching that he was getting applied some, you know, the feeling and, and thoughts that he was having into uh, those adjustments. And you're seeing somebody that is really uh, balanced and um, making good decisions on balls, balls and strikes, and he's impacting the baseball. So uh, quality adjustments, a lot of trust. Uh, it's a big word here for us. Um, and I know that he's going to have, um, from what we've seen, it's all, all the indications are pointing in a very positive direction uh, that he's going to have a very, very good season. It's been remarkable to watch. It's almost like he gets two hits in every at bat. It's, he's really <laughs> made progress. It's been terrific. We're just about done here with D-backs Madness, brought to you by Chevrolet. Thanks to everybody who joined us here on Facebook. Derek, if I can, I'd like to close with you. Just one final thought for D-backs fans as we look ahead to opening day in less than two weeks. Yeah, well, we're, we're certainly excited, that's for sure. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, hearing from the fans, they're excited to get back. We've always said that, you know, baseball has been a part of returning our, our society back to normalcy after wars and after 9-11 and now after this pandemic. Um, but again, the signs are really brightening up here in this state and, and in this market. And MLB has allowed every team to work with its local jurisdiction to determine how they can open, how big of a crowd. And for us, um, to be in a, in a spot where even at 25 percent, I know fans are saying, hey, let's open up more. I, I think it's a good number. And I think it's good for us to, to take a baby step and make sure that we do everything perfectly. And I know we will and that fans do feel comfortable. So, again, I want fans to know when they come to Chase Field, it's going to be a wonderful experience. They're going to feel very safe. They're going to feel very clean and they're going to be confident and comfortable to come back for future games. And again, it's our goal to continue to increase that amount of, of capacity that's allowed in Chase Field because uh, it's going to be an exciting season, a fun team to watch. I, I thank Tori for having a great spring so far. And, and boy, his hours are, are ridiculous. And, and Mike, we're, you know, we're all talking every day and um, we, we can't wait to get going. And last year was, thank goodness it's behind us. It was a strange year for everybody. And now it feels really normal. Let's get this thing going. And it's good to have baseball back. It sure is. I know all of us are looking forward to being joined by fans at the ballpark coming up soon. It's going to be a fun 2021. Thanks to everybody for joining us here. D-Backs Madness brought to you by Chevrolet. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, Derek. And thank you, Mike. And we'll see all of you at the ballpark. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bert. Thanks, Bert. Nice job. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate right, it. See you, D. Thanks, D.